someone who's been uh, a relatively regular guest on the program who's had a rave recently is Eric Crampton, an economist from the centre-right think tank, the New Zealand Initiative. And Eric's later missive was a take on the criticism in an Oxfam report uh, and the ranking of New Zealand and New Zealand's tax system. Uh, uh, why was he slightly outraged about it? Why did he have a crack? Well, let's find out. We're joined now uh, from the New Zealand Initiative by Eric Crampton. Eric, good morning to you, mate. How are you? Not too bad. Yourself? Very well, thank you. All right. So what did Oxfam have to say about the New Zealand tax system that so incensed you? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it incensed, more uh, despondent. Um, the report follows on a long string of reports from Oxfam that just make a hash of statistics. So I was really hoping that when their report came out, it just was going to be treated as toxic waste, as it should have been, because their numbers are always nonsense. Unfortunately, it got some pickup. It had a piece in News Hub and then another piece in the Herald. So it was worth going through it to see what the hell they'd done this time. So Oxfam claimed that New Zealand's tax system is 136th most fair in the world out of 161 countries. So they had a spreadsheet that was ranking 161 countries' tax systems, and they said that New Zealand is 136th in the world for reducing inequality in incomes. Now, the reporting on it was a bit of a hash, and some of that was due to how it was presented by the Oxfam New Zealand rep, who kind of shifted between whether the measure was about wealth inequality or income inequality. If you look at the report, it's about income inequality. Um, but it, it was just nonsense because I'm familiar with this data. My go-to on this stuff is the OECD figures. The OECD has a very good uh, database on this, and it makes it pretty easy to compare across countries uh, the extent to which tax and transfer systems reduce inequality. So in the OECD data, if you go across the full set of countries, they don't have more than 50 that are ranked. And for the most recent year where you've got a decent number, uh, it's, it's under 40. You've got like 27 countries that are ranked in 2019, and you have to go back further to get more countries. So I was, I was wondering, okay, how the hell did they rank more than 136 countries? If they've got New Zealand at 136, they must have had more. Well, where did they get their data from? Does this make any sense? Because the OECD data always puts New Zealand pretty middling. So we're pretty middle of the pack. There's this broad range of countries who's te who have fairly comparable inequality. Like there's bits of differences between them, but they, they don't amount to much. There are big differences in the tails. So, so uh, Eric, Eric I'm just trying to... So the clearly the Oxfam figures are wrong. Made no sense. Yes. Made no sense and they're wrong. From what your analysis, was this a genuine mistake or a willful misrepresentation? Well, they just came up with a measure that's kind of nonsense. So the way that they ranked countries was they took uh, the proportion of tax that's collected in each country from income tax and company tax and a value-added tax and then multiplied it by some coefficient that they think represents the reduction in inequality that you tend to get from each of those types of tax, but it's really Eric, you don't need to go any further. It was made up. Yeah. Okay. Well, and this clearly it's wasn't fact-checked yeah. fact -checked by any journalist in New Zealand who ran the story. Well, well the Herald piece at least uh, went to another expert asking about the effects of wealth taxes because the Oxfam local rep was making the case for wealth taxes, which is kind of weird because the OECD, sorry, the Oxfam measure on inequality that they've got if you added a wealth tax to New Zealand, it wouldn't really move well, things. Well, um, hold, hold on, measure. Eric. Oxfam is a charitable organisation. What's it doing yeah. advocating and getting involved in talking about tax policy in any particular country? I presume it's got charity status, but part of the deal yeah, with charity yeah. status, as John Tamahiri is finding out, is you stay out of politics. Well, they're not advocating for any particular political party, and I had understood that to be the, the deal with charitable status. We at, our, our, our shop isn't a charity. We're an NGO, uh, non-profit, but uh, we, we're nonpartisan. We advocate for policy. Oxfam also advocates for policy. But I've always understood it, Oxfam to be a development aid agency, and they do do that, that is their main line of work. But over the past decade, it has felt like they... Um, well, they seem to be drumming up donations by issuing increasingly shrill reports on the state of inequality. So they've had yep. this... And I can remember four or five yep. years ago watching this trend emerge 
and they were basically putting yeah. out these reports that were factually inaccurate then and were clearly, if you like, coming from a political uh, point of uh, a hand wringing liberal political uh, point of view, and it was about inequality in the world, and they were just just plain wrong. Um, mainstream media didn't seem keen to to correct them. I guess you know if people are giving money to charities or for you know for good works. Um, maybe you've got to be a bit more discerning about Oxfam. You might be paying for some sort of political movement rather than an aid and development movement. Well, at least some of the uh, effective altruism um, outfits that sort of rank charities, they still rate Oxfam's development work, but I have no clue what proportion of their their spending is on that development work compared to generating dodgy reports. The dodgy reports are probably going to be pretty small, uh, pretty small in the grand scheme of things. They seem intended to generate publicity and to then generate donations. But, man, if you can't trust them on stuff that you can easily verify, it's yeah. you easily verify, it's harder to trust them on stuff that you can't verify. The wealth inequality reports are nonsense. They'll usually highlight, well, here's how many people in the world earn more than the lowest billion. Um, Tim Harford has a podcast on, on BBC. He's kind of a centrist economist uh, or economic commentator. He pointed out that uh, his friend's six-month-old daughter who just gotten a 50-cent piece had more wealth than the bottom two billion in, in the world because they have no net wealth. Uh, so whenever you're tallying up numbers of billions of people, well, you've got a whole pile of people that start off with net debt. So everybody with a student loan that doesn't have any wealth yet, they yeah. all count as having negative wealth. You add all this stuff up. And it makes no sense. You want to be looking at overall population measures like a Gini coefficient and the Credit Suisse data, which gets released every year on global wealth inequality. Well, it's been showing that New Zealand has been having declining wealth inequality. The Treasury reports saying that, that it's been declining at about a half a percentage point per year over the past decade. Oxfam is always issuing releases saying that things are terrible and only getting worse. Please give us more money. Uh, but it's all lies. Eric, are you concerned that reports like this from Oxfam are run without any questioning of them by mainstream media organisations, that they are given a credibility, that uh, the most basic analysis, is, if you, as you have explained this morning, uh, a credibility that they simply do not deserve, but it seems in many areas our news media simply do not fact-check or probe. I mean, I'd love to see the disinformation project come out with a yeah. critique of Oxfam, but I, I just think that's highly unlikely. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Oxfam has an incredibly good reputation because of incredibly good international development work, and that means that people just don't look under the hood when they come out with these nonsense reports. Yeah, and we should actually, it should be the, the job of the media to do that. Um, Eric, what would you say to someone who was considering flicking a few dollars, a few gold coins Oxfam's way? to put a note on it saying I'm do doing this in support of your development work, but if you keep issuing nonsense reports on inequality, I'm going to stop giving you money. Good on you. Hi, Eric, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Eric Crampton from the New Zealand Initiative. I note one slightly liberal lefty uh, business journalist, Patrick Smalley, uh, also said on social media about this, he said, yeah, I give money to Oxfam, but I am thoroughly sick and tired of them publishing rubbish reports on inequality like this. Um, we might try and get someone from Oxfam online next week to find out why there's such a bunch of red flag-waving commies. Um, uh, we will do that. We will do that. Uh, and if anyone from Oxfam is listening and you want to ring in and give the counterfactual to Eric's excellent analysis of your BS report, please, please feel free.